Good evening, Twitter. It's going to rain tomorrow, and we'll be raining for the next four days. So let's see if we can't get this transmission in there before that happens. Before you put this thing up onto the engine, make sure the torque converter is all the way on the input shaft. And I'm going to position the bolts so that the bottom one is at the lowest most point to help us align it with the flex plate. If you missed the previous video, that's where all the context is. I'm installing an AW4 transmission in this 2001 Jeep Cherokee. So in the last video, I mentioned something about extending the transfer case vent tube. It usually comes up to about where the dipstick bolts to, but that's not very high. And uh, the front differential vent tube comes up way up here. So I've decided to get some uh, vent hose and run it to about the same general area and attach it to the transfer case vent, which is right there. And that fits on tight enough where I don't think I'll need a hose clamp. So I'm gonna do the same thing with the transmission vent tube, which is a little bit farther up there, and then put the transmission in. The vent tubes have these little fittings on them. I will link these in the description. So, my goal is to get that alignment peg into that hole right there. And you can kind of see that the transmission angle is not the same as the engine angle. So I'm going to use a combination of adjusting the engine height and adjusting this thing to get them to line up straight. So the transmission is all the way on the engine. Both sides have zero gap between the transmission, backing plate, and engine. So now I've put in both of the side bolts, the 16 millimeters. We're gonna tighten and torque those down. We'll tighten these down in an alternating pattern to make sure the transmission goes on there evenly. Now I've got the two side bolts secured. I'm going to remove the engine jack and lower the whole thing on the transmission jack so that I can fit my long slew of extensions in there to torque down those E12 bolts at the top. I'm also going to use some thread locker on those. Now that we've got four of the bolts torqued, I'm going to raise the transmission up. Next, we need to attach the exhaust hanger and transmission mount. But if you notice, the jack is in the way of that. So how are we going to do that? Well, I'm going to use another jack stand and use it to support the transfer case. So we're going to have to lower this a bit, but that's okay. Support the transfer case, put the mount on, and then reposition the the jack and uh, raise it back up so we can put the cross member in. All right, so I've repositioned the transmission jack. Now we can put our exhaust hanger up there and install our new transmission mount. I took some time to clean off all the dirt and grease on the cross member, and something I learned is that 2000 plus XJs have a different transmission mount than all previous years. 87s through 99s used an offset mount, while 2000 Plus uses a centered mount with an alignment hole to specify direction. As you can see, this new mount doesn't match the old one, so in this case I'm going to reinstall my old mount. 
Thankfully it's not broken, but I'll have to replace it at a later date. The cross member is direction specific, so if you took pictures before removing it, reference those. On 2000 plus models, this hole here should be towards the passenger side front. Make sure you give the threads a good cleaning, and I would recommend replacing these bolts. I don't know what thread pitch they are, and nobody else seems to know either, but since I have to remove the cross member again soon to replace the transmission mount, I'm just going to coat the old bolts in anti seize and use those for now. We can finally remove the transmission jack. Next, install the dipstick tube. I put anti-seize on it too. Getting the dipstick tube back in actually turned out to be quite the hassle, so I had a second person up here with a small block of wood and a mallet hammering the top of it and then I was down here and I grabbed it with pliers and pulled it down don't forget to reinstall the dipstick tube bolt and that one bolt that nobody on the internet seems to know anything about Next, plug in the transmission lines and make sure they snap into place. Don't forget to reinstall that bracket if you took it off. Next, we can reattach the throttle valve kick down cable. Bolt down and reattach the transmission shift linkage and don't forget about that bracket that has the crankshaft position sensor connector on it. Attach your four wheel drive linkage and adjust it and also don't forget the transfer case vent hose. Now we're going to connect all the electronic stuff. You might notice I labeled most of the connectors, but they only fit where they're supposed to go. Next I'm going to attach the torque converter to the flex plate, but before I reinstall those bolts, I'm going to clean them off and put some new thread locker on them. If you align the torque converter before install, this isn't really that hard to connect. Once again, using the ratchet on the crank pulley to hold that still, I'm going to torque down each of these four bolts to 40 foot-pounds. Finally, we can reinstall the inspection cover, which I have bent back to its normal shape. I put that one bolt in backwards, and it works just fine. After that's in, throw on the starter. At this point, you're probably going to be anxious to get everything done. But slow down, take a deep breath, and note that I cross-threaded the top bolt trying to hurry things along. Next, install the drive shafts. These get torqued to 14 foot pounds, and don't forget to put a zip tie around this collar here. Next, fill the transfer case with fluid. I'm using Dexron 6. Now carefully add some transmission fluid. Don't fill it to the fill line yet, there's no telling exactly how much it needs, but a dry fill is 8.5 quarts 
and a regular fluid change is about 4.5 quarts. To accurately check the level, the transmission must be at operating temperature, idling in neutral. I'm going to lower the vehicle and remove the jack stands so it sits on level ground. Finally, reconnect the battery. Go ahead and start the engine. Check the transmission pan, dipstick tube, and transfer case for any leaks. When the engine is at operating temperature, pull the handbrake up and put the transmission in neutral to check the fluid level. Hold the brake down and shift through each gear, holding it there for about 30 seconds each. I'm going to start with baby steps. Just a little bit reverse, and then a little bit back forward. After you've got the fluid to the correct level, go for a test drive. I ended up needing about 6 quarts, but you might need more or less depending how much was drained when it was removed. If you don't have 4th gear, it won't start in neutral, or your reverse lights don't work, or if the check engine light displays error code P0705, the neutral safety switch is misadjusted, or you need a new one. Well, uh, I didn't script this part because I never thought I'd get this far. But uh, that's how you replace a transmission. It's a pretty rewarding feeling. So, uh, here's a couple things I did. I rerouted the transfer case vent hose up here right next to the front differential breather hose. Uh, this way it's a lot higher than it otherwise would have been, and the transmission vent hose is at the same height-ish over here instead. Uh, these little end fittings, you can buy these on Rock Auto. I have those linked in the description. Uh, but other than the vent hoses 
and the 242 swap. That's all the modifications I did. Uh, also, uh, something to do after you put in a transmission is try to start it in park and neutral. Uh, this one does not start in neutral. That means I need to adjust the neutral safety switch. Uh, my reverse lights work though, so it's not that far misaligned. It just doesn't want to start in neutral, uh, which is fine. It starts in park, but you might run into some issues engaging fourth gear if you have a misadjusted NSS, which is that thing right there. And since this exhaust pipe is right here, I'm going to wait for that to cool down before I mess with it. Um, but yeah, for the next few days, I'm just gonna take it easy. I'm gonna monitor for fluid leaks. I'm gonna listen for any weird noises. Perhaps, you know, I might have missed a bolt somewhere and it might be loose, but uh, I don't know. Recording everything made me pretty thorough in the job, so. <coughs> uh, when it comes to the mail, I am going to put in a new transmission mount because uh, I had to reuse my old one because Rock Auto sent me the wrong part. So I'm going to find one for a 2001 and put in a transmission mount. Uh, but other than that, I'm going to keep an eye on fluid level. And uh, I, think, I think I'm good to go. And hopefully this transmission doesn't uh, end up with the same fate as, as the uh, previous one. I am also heavily considering installing a transmission cooler. I kind of really procrastinated about doing that with the old one and I'm pretty sure that's why it died so I'm probably gonna have to put a transmission cooler in here I'm probably gonna put it right in the middle and since I don't have air conditioning there's plenty of room behind here because there's no condenser or anything because uh, who needs AC in Wisconsin but yeah if I missed anything if there's anything you'd like to add to this video uh, just let me know I'd I'd hope to make this as comprehensive as a guide as possible, even though this was my first time ever doing it. When I made this video, it had been exactly two years since the first time I ever worked on a car. And from that simple brake job on the Yeep to where I am today, it really has been a wild ride. If you would have told me I'd be replacing a transmission when I had the Yeep, I would not have believed you. So to anyone out there in fear of this daunting task, remember our XJs really are the last of their kind, so it's important to keep them running. And if you need to replace a transmission to do that, I hope I can say I've helped by creating a tutorial not for sake of bragging about accomplishing something, but to convey useful information. So many how-to videos on the internet are rooted in simple avarice, created only to show others that they did this thing not to show others how to do this thing. Knowledge should be free, and that's something I intend to enforce around here. The coup de gras. Right here, I'm getting close. Oh yeah, oh yeah, come on baby, let's go. Yes sir! <laughs>